stay in that part of the world um, with uh, re- particular regard to the growing tensions between Turkey and the Kurdish rebel group, the PKK, following the public abandonment of the peace process there. Uh, the government in Iraqi Kurdistan has called on the Kurdish separatist group, the PKK, to move its soldiers and camps away from populated areas to prevent civilian casualties. Mustafa Fala is Iraqi Kurdistan's foreign minister. So we've asked the PKK to leave the populated areas. We do not want our population in these countryside, in these areas, to pay the price. What happened today was a tragedy. Over a dozen people have been killed and a dozen more have been wounded. Houses have been destroyed, people have suffered. That's why we do not want uh, the people of Kurdistan to pay the price of this continued struggle. The Iraqi Kurdish Authority also condemned Turkey's bombing campaign following reports that civilians had been killed in raids inside Iraq. But a PKK spokesman told the BBC that the Iraqi Kurdish president, Masoud Barzani, knew of and had approved Turkish airstrikes against PKK targets in Iraq. Its spokesman is Zagros Hiwa. When the bombardment happened, I was in the When the bombardment happened, I was in the area. Seven houses were hit and levelled to the ground. After that, there were two wounded people. And when people ran to the rescue of the wounded people and wanted to save them, airplanes fired four rockets at those people and all those seven people were killed. That's what happened. It's a massacre that the Turkish army has done. It's the KRG administration, President Barzani, who has approved these airstrikes against his own civilians. We took every step needed to start negotiations with the Turkish side, but the only thing they want to give to the Kurds is just pain. Well, countries like the United States have pinned their hopes on the Kurds to rein in the Islamic State. Now, though, the picture is more complicated. Well, let's try and unpick some of that and assess whether the Kurds are better or worse off since the fighting began in Iraq and Syria. With me, Dr Latif Tass, a Kurdish affairs analyst. Welcome, Latif. And on the line, Choman Hadi, a poet and painter who teaches at the American University of Iraq in the Kurdish city of Suleymaniyya. Choman Hadi, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Uh, Latif Tass, what's your analysis of the most recent developments with regards to the airstrikes and the change of attitude from Ankara? The, first of all, actually, the peace process continued between Turks and Kurds since 2013. But it is not first pr- peace process. This is the fourth one. The first one started 1993, then second 1997, the 2009 and two, two, 2013. And all this peace process, actually, we cannot call them peace process. It's between unbalanced power, negotiation continue. And after each of these peace process, there's a huge darkness between Turks and Kurds. And actually, thousands and thousands of people usually kill after this peace process. There's a problem with the peace process itself, the first we need to uh, point out. And if next one starts, it should start differently, actually. The second one, the development in Iraq and Syria is threat for Kur- Turkey. We we observed this one last year, actually just one year ago, August, when ISIS almost was taken off Erbil, Turkey even didn't help it. And uh, if there wasn't United States airstrike, actually Erbil could have taken by ISIS. The second one, development in Syria by Kurds, is also second threat by Turkey. And third one, the Turkish uh, Kurdish uh, political success in Turkey, and outside there is a success by Kurds, and inside Turkey there is a success by Kurdish political activism. And this one, I think Turkish government, especially Erdogan, is not happy about this process because it's against his own plan and uh, Turkish state's plan. Uh, Of course, the view from Ankara would be that within the wider uh, Kurdish uh, grouping, Uh, of course, exists the PKK, um, and as far as Turkey is concerned, that is a terrorist organisation. I think every group, including AKP party, we are not um, talking about one unitary group. There are many different groups within groups. I think within PKK also there is different uh, group as well. And uh, recent development is actually show us something going on we don't know. We cannot uh, read because, but also there are uh, some action, for example, against two police forces. Turkey, uh, PKK said they didn't do that. Mm. But in the, they stay one week, 
to say that they didn't do that. And uh, that showed that actually PKK has some also problem with them themselves as well. Um, let me bring you, Chaman Hadi, in as well. In terms of your experience on the ground, there you are in Sulaymaniyah. Um, there is such a confusing picture, as I suspect that the last minute or so has illustrated. How does it feel where you are just now? Uh, first of all, the statement that was given by the KRG spokesperson, um, that is basically the position of the KDP in particular, led by Barzani. The majority of the people in Kurdistan, in Iraqi Kurdistan, actually support the Kurds in Turkey and um, also the PKK and especially HDP, the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, which has won 12 percent of the votes in the last election. Yeah. So yeah. that statement, that official statement does not represent how the Kurds in Iraq feel about this. Secondly, I think there are two interacting um, different interests here. The West and America are interested in, um, you know, fighting ISIS or at least containing or defeating ISIS. Turkey is at all, it, uh, in, not in any way interested in this. We know that Turkey has remained silent about the, um, 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 what's happened in, in Syria. We know that they've even provided a, a jihadist highway. We know that um, they have been providing logistics, support, medical care to terrorists. Um, finally, um, America managed to convince them to provide airspace for mm. you know, Iraq, you know, U.S. planes, but that was in return um, actually co co coinciding with, coinciding with um, the interests of Turkey um, in, in, in fighting the Kurds. And yeah, yeah, you're, I, you're I, referring I, there to the, the access or use of the Interlake Air Base, which, of course, the Turks have recently said that they will allow the Americans to make use of. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, if America is interested in the war in, with uh, fighting ISIS, actually, uh, Turkey is interested in fighting the Kurds. And this is not just about the PKK. This is actually about the democratically elected HDP, the Kurdish People's Democratic Party, which won 12 percent of the votes. And Turkey is doing this in order to win uh, because the election uh, results, the election might be repeated because they are not reaching an agreement or coalition. And they are hoping to secure nationalist votes for the Justice and Development Party, Erdogan's party, and hopefully win the next election let, without let, Kurds. Let me bring my guests in who might want to ask uh, questions of either of you. Um, Cilio. What, what we've been hearing about the the actions of of the Kurds against ISIS mainly for the past year or so. That brought a lot of attention to the plight of the Kurds overall, which is, unless you're special, you have a special interest in that. The general public didn't know much about it. And one of the things that the, the public worldwide found out is that the, the Kurdish population spread out throughout these countries in the area want to have their own nation, want to have their own country, in fact. How close do you think that has become now and how much has the Turkish action hurt that goal? Um, Latif Tas, deal with that, then I'll bring Latif Henry. here, yeah. I think the, especially Iraqi Kurdistan, they are actually close to independent and uh, they have been uh, functioning at de facto state since 1991. Almost 24 years old state, actually, we can talk, but they haven't uh, managed to go their own ways. And Syrian Kurds, especially now, since last one year, fighting against ISIS, the only maybe successful forces so far uh, have been uh, win some p uh, position against ISIS. And uh, of course, these two are big threat for Turkey because Turkey doesn't want, and uh, Erdogan several times he actually uh, clarify, he doesn't want any uh, different state in South regions, especially Kurdish state, because the majority of Kurds live in Turkey, around between 15 to 20 million Kurds live in Turkey. And I think uh, from that picture when we look at, especially our, before the Syrian war, Turkey and Erdogan had a different wishes about Syria, removing Assad mm. and creating a government which is close to Sunni uh, dominated government, but it didn't work because it just it wasn't one first mistake of Turkey actually in Middle East. It was a mistake start with Libya, Egypt, and continue with Libya, uh, Syria as well. Chairman, Chairman Hardy, can I bring you in on that as well? The, the response to what Silio asked. 
Yes, I mean, um, you know, the, the, originally the Kurds in Iraq managed to get close to this idea of independence, the de facto autonomy after 1992 when the no-fly zone was set up, and especially after uh, the defeat of Saddam Hussein in 2003, and recently because uh, of the war in ISIS and loss of control by the Iraqi state, uh, there has been a growing voice, a stronger voice for independence, and there's been talks of a referendum here. Turkey was very hostile towards this idea at the beginning, but Turkey has now invested heavily in Iraqi Kurdistan. There is oil deals. Many of the goods that you see in the shops here are from Turkey. So this, there has been more leniency. But I think the threat now is more the Kurds in Syria, which, uh, you know, who have formed three cantons of Jazeera, Kobani and Afrin, and also um, this collaboration between Kurds in Turkey, Kurds in Syria, and the Peshmerga forces in uh, Iraqi Kurdistan for the liberation of the Sinjar Mountain and the Yazidis, there was a moment of hope, a moment of unity, a moment of mm. possible bigger picture, and that was very threatening for Turkey. Just, just one final point to you, if I may, and it's really to get sort of underneath the politics, if you like, and hear a bit more of the sort of the sense of, of there you are, you're a poet and a painter, and you're teaching at this university, as I described at the start of the conversation. How is all of that... Uh, your everyday life, your your means of making a living. How is all of that affected by what's going on around you just now? It is it is very a, de a depressing phase here. Um, there there were already enough problems. The war with ISIS, the, you know, the refugee IDP crisis. Over one million refugees now live in Kurdistan alone, which the population here is five million, by the way. So it's a it's a large number of people who've come in, and there's been problems with the central government over the salaries of the civil servants here because of oil deals and disagreement between Kurdistan regional government and Iraq government. There's also the issue of Kurdistan constitution being discussed, Kurdistan presidency is being discussed at this moment. And added to this is now Turkish attacks on PKK, but also on civilians in Iraqi Kurdistan. And yesterday, 10 people were killed in an Iraqi Kurdish village, 11 when were injured and dozens more are missing. I mean, this is something that we don't need at this moment. It's creating a lot of depression and hopelessness. Uh, very good to have you both on. Thank you very much indeed.